Back again at the Bastel booth, um, and people last night when I posted the video um, were really excited about the uh, motor and the sensor modules, but they weren't exactly sure what the difference was between solenoids, uh, servos and motors. Maybe you can just really quickly tell them uh, what the difference is and how they are used here on the modules. Yes, so, so like, um, yeah, basically like different kinds of motors are good for different kind of stuff. Like, uh, what we don't really provide yet is sort of like mechanical solution how to attach the motors to the things that you want to use them for. And um, I think we really, really need to show people like what the motors can do and what's the type of motor that people might be interested in to use. Yeah. So um, now I have here a little servo motor. I think you can buy it in Conrad or any like basic like RC hobby store. It usually has these three pin connector, which has uh, power supply, uh, which is the red and uh, uh, brown cable, and then the signal cable. Usually those hobby servos, they work on five volts. Mm -hmm. And also that's um, how, how this module is designed. So it's really for the hobby servos. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically you can see this one rotates in angle uh, 180 degrees, it can do the rotation and uh, the way you communicate with the servo is that you say I want this angle and then it goes to the angle and uh, with the with the servo driving uh, module um, let's have a look at it we have uh, two different inputs one of them is trigger or I should maybe more say a gate input and there are two knobs here, and if I use the gate input, the first knob uh, sets, sets an angle. Let's let's show it on this uh, servo motor here. Yeah. So I'm now setting the angle just with the potentiometer, and if I use the trigger input, the other potty sets the other angle. It goes to when the gate is high. So you can really like set two angles that are good for like I don't know if you want to uh, hit a with a drumstick to a drum, that's like what, what do you need to do, more or less. So then when I plug this uh, yeah, gate, gate signal, it does exactly what I've just said. And then there is the CV input, and in the CV input, uh, the second potty doesn't set another second angle, because there's no second angle, you just set the base angle, and then you have attenuator for the CV. So, Basically, you, with the attenuator, you set the range of the angles you are interested in, and with the angle body, you set like where is the sort of the center if you have bipolar LFO, okay. or where is the edge if you have yeah. unipolar, and that's what uh, we have like down here on the on the on the snare because that's really like a, a triangle wave LFO now driving it. Maybe I can switch to sawtooth so you can really see how it works with the LFO, yeah. So, so now really the position of, uh, of, of of the servo is exact representation of the actual value of the LFO. Okay. So that's uh, servo motors, yeah. Then uh, what um, I have here is uh, like inside of a CD-ROM drive. It's actually with most of them you can take this out. If you just take out all the electronics, you are kept with something which is a really cool like mechanical device which is designed just to move this way and yeah there is all the mechanic parts you need and it's done really really well and it's really cheap to get so I really like to use those and there is usually this motor which is called a DC motor and it basically just um, it has two wires and if you put one polarity it goes it rotates very fast towards one direction, if you do it the opposite side, it goes to the other direction. And then there is like this mechanics, uh, this gear to like convert the very fast rotating speed into slower movement of, of this. You can control the speed of the motor or more, more better to say the strength of the motor. So like if this needs to fight through gravity, if it has less strength, it goes higher, uh, slower, and then if, if you do it with the same strength down, it basically goes faster because, yeah, that's the gravity. That's what what happens up the up there with the with, with the DC motor that I have the 
selenoid attached to. But you can get like really different types of those. Uh, I was using a fan uh, to, to make a wind uh, before and you could really control how much the wind it does because it really like, controls the strength of the motor. So, um, so what is the voltage range uh, you can get out of this module and which, uh, with which the motors work? Yeah, like on, on the DC motor driver you have a little switch which switches in between the input voltage, so it takes the input voltage directly. So I have now five volts in, and that's what most of the computer stuff works on. But I can put, I think the circuit can go up to like 20 volts if you, if you need that, but most of the time you don't need that. Then that means that you have an external power supply going into the module at the front, right? Exactly, yes. Uh, like all of those, they need the external power supply. As, as I mentioned like in the last uh, interview, uh, all the modular path is optically isolated from uh, the motor driving path, so there is no ground connection, and you you don't want you really don't want to drive the motors with your the synth uh, power supply. Yeah. yeah, that would take a lot of a uh, lot of current, and you simply don't want that. Yeah. That would be really dangerous. So, like all those connectors, uh, maybe I can show you. We really like those and I th we are considering to ship the modules with those connectors because you can just screw the, um, the cables in and we use like those jacks, like these are the power supply jacks and we use them just because we found those connectors. So if you have just any motor that just has some wires coming out of it, which most of the motors do, you don't need to make a special cable, you just need a screwdriver and screw it in. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's that's the DC motors, yes. and uh, then the solenoids. How do they work? Yes. So the solenoids. Um, let's maybe have a look at one. Um, so if you see, like the solenoid motor, basically, is just like plucking. It's really just moves one direction. It's like an inductor which just moves um, the metallic piece forward if there is a current going, going through the inductor. Okay. Especially like those uh, solenoids, they take quite a lot of power, quite a lot of current, like especially at the peaks and also when discharging. So you really need a special circuitry to, to protect from negative effects. Okay. And yeah, basically that, that, that's what would, you would use them for. They really meant to be on only for short time, like most of the solenoids have like, they can be on for 30% of the time mm -hmm. to not heat too much and would, if, if you would just leave them on they would burn oh, okay. after right. a while. Yeah. So yeah, you, you sort of like need to know how to use it, mm -hmm. but uh, our module doesn't uh, allow you to just put gate, leave a gate on mm -hmm. that would just, you know, make the motor burn right. in most of the cases. So if we have a look at the module again, we have um, four channels. This one module can drive four uh, solenoids. So it has um, uh, four trigger inputs, A, B, C, D, and four outputs. Uh, these solenoids I have here are for 12 volts, and I have uh, here, um, that's uh, like a standard computer power supply, and they are actually really good for driving motors. They are really solid, they have protection for if you take too much current, so it's, yeah, it, you, well, you might burn the fuse inside, but that's the worst thing that can happen to them. And some of them have like the PTC fuses, not, not the old school ones. So the, yeah, th those are really good for driving motors. And again, like with those connectors, all you need to do is just cut the wire and uh, plug it into, into this type of connector and you're ready to use it. So. Anybody who has this guy lying around and it's cheap to get, uh, should, I, I would really highly recommend to use it for the solenoids. And um, there is also this knob on the solenoid um, driver, which sets uh, uh, sort of the output pulse width that goes to the solenoids. And um, just imagine you need certain time for, for, the, for the thing to go fully to, to hit the object. So you need to drive it for a very certain time and like the standard trigger length of the trigger signal, it's too short for them to go the full way. 
so that's why this control is here. So you like sort of optimize how long the output pulse is. But if you turn it fully counterclockwise, it does the original. Yeah. Okay, so and lastly we have the sensor modules uh, which work on resistance, I think? Resistance and voltage, okay. yes. So if we can take a close-up on those, like there is this uh, switch which flips between uh, voltage input and uh, ohm input, like the resistance input. So this is the resistance input, this is the voltage input. And uh, also to the voltage input, there is normalized this little patch bay, where, where is ground, the voltage input itself, 5 volts and 3 volts. Like for instance, like this uh, uh, pulse sensor, it needs uh, to be powered because as you see there is LED on it and it works like on an optical basis, so it needs to be powered by 5 volts and then it outputs a voltage. And a lot of uh, the Arduino type sensors, they come with those uh, like pin headers that are just easy to plug into an Arduino. And this is like the same pin header that is on the Arduino. So any type of analog sensor that can work with Arduino or with any of the open source project should work with this, but not with digital sensors. Yeah, It can't read out like digital sensors. They really need to output a real voltage. Uh, so, so, like from the more sophisticated ones, I have the pulse sensor here. Somewhere in the booth, I also have a wind sensor, which outputs a voltage, and I also have some analog accelerometer. And yeah, what, what else uh, gives voltage? But yeah, basically everything you, ha you have, just analog, uh, w would work generally with that. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah. So that, that's the voltage input and the resistance input. I mean. Um, like human body has a resistance, so you, you can like make body contacts as well, just to get get the resistance signal. You can attach the resistance input to a plant, for instance. Like we have a plant here, it's not connected really, but like those plants with the big leaves, especially philodendrons, uh, they can be like very uh, reactive to the environment. So, but like on sort of. Uh, in, a sh in a short moment, like if you enter the room, which was empty for a few hours, the resistance of the plant will change. Yeah. So I don't know if if you have it to detune your oscillator, like you know uh, that um, your oscillator is playing in tune only when the plant is happy. Then <laughs> you know you can do this. Okay. Uh, but also like yeah, the, the light sensors, uh, just a simple. Light dependent resistors, they are really, really interesting sensors. And I'm using them here for the lava lamp. It's just, just the light sensor. Um, as you can see, we made a little breakout. Here, I can show it better. And we are also planning to do sort of like a starter kit of sensors for people to get. So you don't really need to know like where all the hobby stores have them. And we'll also like do it with those breakouts. So you just need a normal patch cable, you patch in the photoresistor and you have it. And yeah, I also have something like this here. This is an inductor. Uh, and well, this one you can use to pick up electromagnetic um, noise. Like if I have my phone and so I can listen like what's happening in the phone if I amplify it through the sensor module as well. Yeah. So basically, uh, if you're in a hobby, hobby store or if you're online at a retailer, you will definitely find some sensors or motors that will work with your module. Yes, absolutely. They, it works with every standard type of sensor which has analog output. All right, great. Yeah, thanks a lot for your time again. And yeah, looking forward uh, for what people do with the motors now. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, I hope it's now clear. And thanks, Felix. Thanks for giving people the insight.